Ramayana part 15 the coronation proposal many years passed by once bharata's mother's brother yuddhajit the king of kekaya visited ayodhya while returning he wished to take bharata with him and dashrada consented shatrugnya who was ever with bharata like his shadow accompanied him the old monarch ashwapati was happy to see his grandson bharata and shatrugnya who had accompanied him he treated them with utmost affection and desired that they should stay with him for some time the two youths stayed there spending their days in the happy service of their elders in ayodhya rama and lakshmana devoted themselves to the service of dasharatha king dasharatha loved all his sons but Rama was particularly dear to him this was because of Rama's character he was valiant but yet of gentle disposition he never raised his voice he was not jealous of any one and vanity dare not go near him sri rama would practice archery every day he toiled to improve his mastery over arrows and other weapons of astras and shastras a shastra is a weapon behind which there is only physical prowess and astra has behind it the power of a mantra a sacred verse sri rama studied the four vedas the rigveda the yajurveda the samaveda and the atharvana veda diligently confirming to the prescribed forms and rituals he also studied deeply the vedangas shiksha vyakarana nirukti jyotisha kalpa and chandassu whenever time permitted he would engage in dialogue with elders on matters relating to dharma he constantly sought to improve his knowledge sri rama was full of compassion for the poor he was deferential towards elders and in the face of gravest crisis he remained unperturbed he had a prodigious memory he was brilliant he was also conversant with the affairs of the world neither joy nor sorrow could disturb his serenity sri rama was also well versed in music drama literature and other fine arts like painting and dancing there was no warrior who could face rama in the battlefield he was proficient in the formation of armies sri rama was as patient as the earth as wise as brihaspati the guru of the gods and as valiant as devendra dashrata's gladness waxed as days passed however with the passing of time old age began to creep over dashrata besides fearful omens were seen in ayodhya dashrata was perturbed he felt that his days were numbered and so he reflected in this manner these omens warn against an impending calamity my days are over i am growing weaker day by day i can no longer shoulder the burden of administration as i used to this responsibility i shall entrust to rama he is a treasure house of virtues he is always concerned about the welfare of the subjects their interests and prosperity the people too are full of affection for him and proud of him they will approve if i tell them that i shall make him yuvaraja the heir apparent king dasharatha called an assembly of his courtiers to announce his decision the rulers of vassal kingdoms kings of states in the east the west the north and the south mlecha rulers representatives of tribal people in hilly regions ministers generals of the army several officers and prominent citizens were all there the assembly shone like the court of devendra dasharatha addressed the assembly and said honorable men of my court i have called you to seek your opinion on a proposal i have as you know i have grown old i cannot rule over the kingdom without strain as before i have therefore thought of anointing my eldest son sri rama as the yuvaraja and handing over the administration to him kindly tell me if this meets with your approval or else suggest what i can do and i shall follow your decision 
the courtiers were delighted to learn that dashratha had decided to anoint sri rama they applauded deafeningly in a single voice they said your majesty we entirely approve your decision you now need rest so anoint sri rama and have rest they continued great lord sri rama is valiant strong and able to rule he has a sense of justice and he is knowledgeable and wise he will look after the subjects as his own children therefore make rama the yuvraja and have no worries dashratha was pleased that his courtiers had endorsed his proposal he said to the royal priest great sage somehow I am apprehensive about the future I have therefore decided to anoint Sri Rama without delay we do not have much time tomorrow is an auspicious day the star pushya presides over this day in the month of chaitra and so i have decided that sri rama will become the yuvraja from tomorrow itself we do not have enough time to send word to kekaya and king janaka who are far from here but assuredly they will rejoice when they hear this news great sage tell me what things you will need for the coronation and i will arrange to have them ready sage vashishta replied we shall need different varieties of grains herbs garlands of white flowers castor ghee honey and other articles diamonds and precious stones gold pearl and articles of worship we need arrows and weapons impelled by mantras we also need the army with four divisions an elephant with auspicious signs a white chamara a white fan a flag and a white umbrella besides we shall need hundreds of cows and kalashas sacred vessels filled with holy waters dashratha instructed his ministers to collect all the articles vashishta had listed he sent sumantra to fetch rama sumantra was the chief minister he was senior in age and one of those trusted by dashratha he fetched rama sri rama made obeisances to his father touching his feet dashratha blessed his son and said sri rama i am getting old i am no longer equal to the task of administering this kingdom i wish therefore to retire sri rama your fine qualities have pleased me immensely you are always immersed in thoughts about the welfare of the people i have therefore decided to anoint you as yuvaraja we do not have much choice of auspicious days and so i have thought of celebrating the crowning tomorrow itself ramachandra as their king look after the people well you should repay your debts to the gods the rishis and your ancestors the gods have what saved such bounties of nature as plenty of crops plenty of rains and sunshine repay the debt of the gods by performing sacrifices through a tradition of studies the rishis have preserved the vedas composed great works and disseminated knowledge discharge their debt by studying them and helping in the dissemination and propagation of knowledge your ancestors have given you the body and developed it for the body enables you to earn punya religious merit repay their debt by having excellent children and molding them into good people go now my son return to the palace you and your wife sita should fast today and worship god devotedly get up early tomorrow in the morning and complete the religious rites prepare for the coronation his father's words made sri rama happy he rejoiced to hear that he was to be crowned the next day respectfully he bowed to his father and returned to the palace he bowed to his mother and gave her the news kausalya was overjoyed she could hardly speak for her heart overflowed with happiness she said my child may good attend on you rule the kingdom well and always think of the welfare of the people i will mother said sri rama bowed to her again and went to sita's apartments he told her too the news she was thrilled both began the worship of god devotedly the citizens started decorating the city 
tall poles were erected before temples and other religious institutions and in important roads and squares banners of different colors fluttered from these poles flag posts were also put up before assembly halls mansions and trade centers the highways were decorated with flowers and lights they all waited for the next day